Nemane Patis Vidiat Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Today, um, as I mentioned, uh, is the Feast of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, um, and not in the traditional calendar, but um, uh, nonetheless, her feast day is assigned for today. And she, um, let's see, was the first American-born saint. Well, I guess, mm, yeah, so she was born in 1774, which is before America existed, right, 1776. But really, ever since Kateri Tikakwitha was canonized, I think she stole it from Elizabeth Ann Seton, because Kateri was, you know, 1500-something American, right, Native American. Anyways, Elizabeth Ann Seton, she um, established the first Catholic girls' school in the nation and founded the first American religious institution, the Sisters of Charity. As I mentioned, born in the year 1774 uh, as, uh, to a wealthy Episcopalian family by the name of Bailey. So she was not born Catholic, but rather Protestant. Uh, her mother died when she was only three years old and her father remarried. And um, despite, um, I would say, being you know, Protestant, uh, we do have to admit that the, the graces of baptism are real graces. And so Elizabeth's stepmother would take her along on charitable house calls. Um, uh, but unfortunately, the second marriage ended in divorce, and Elizabeth's uh, once kind stepmother uh, rejected her, so now she lost two mothers, her natural mother and then uh, the stepmother. Uh, Elizabeth married uh, William Seaton at age 19, from whom she took her name, and he was a wealthy businessman, and so she continued her life of high society uh, among Protestant circles there in New York, which was, I guess, every circle since Catholics were... Um, you know, either poor or not, you know, um, um, just not accepted. Uh, despite the wealth that she enjoyed, she was a devout Episcopalian. It says she was uh, frequently communicated in their version of it and continued the charitable example of her mother-in-law, uh, visiting the poor and the sick, generous with her time, among others. Um, <clears throat> and so, as I mentioned, the graces of baptism, it seemed, were working despite the errors of Protestantism. Um, however, just a few years later, her husband's fortunes would turn. Uh, he was an international businessman, and he lost two ships at sea, as well as England went to war with France, which was not good for his business, and so his health ended up taking a turn for the worse. Uh, doctors advised moving to a warmer climate, so the whole family, uh, Elizabeth and her husband and their children, uh, uh, went to Italy, because uh, he had some business partners there, uh, but upon arriving, everyone was quarantined for a month on the boat due to a yellow fever outbreak in New York. Uh, sadly for Elizabeth and her children, um, her husband died shortly afterwards, and she was left uh, completely devastated. Um, the family was impoverished. She lost her husband. She had five children to take care of, and they were in a foreign country where they didn't even speak the language. So this seems to be a, a, a tremendous disaster. Um, and, you know, especially for Protestants, you know, their, their, their theology, you know, not being correct, uh, they have this idea that if you are um, faithful in life to God, God should bless you in life, and he doesn't always do that. Uh, but but um, um, God always turns, you know, for those who remain faithful through difficulty, um, God often gives, <clears throat> or always gives, more graces than we can imagine, and so what happened is um, her father's uh, business partners, all being from Italy, were Catholic. And so they taught her the true faith. And she began her journey towards the truth, and she completed it uh, there in, uh, she returned shortly to New York and was uh, baptized, in, or not baptized, but confirmed and received into the, into the Catholic Church uh, at St. Peter's Basilica uh, there in New York. I don't know if it was the magnificent structure it was, it is now, but at the time, uh, St. Peter's was the only Catholic church in New York uh, due to anti-Catholicism. Uh, no other churches, they would, they would not allow any other churches to be built. Uh, so Elizabeth Ann Seton, uh, uh, kind of uh, dis in, in her first move, right, uh, displayed what she would be uh, later famous for. She opened a school for upper-class girls in New York City. And this, this could have done well, it started out well, but when mothers be began to find out that she was Catholic, they pulled their daughters from the school because they, they couldn't have any of that. Uh, so she was, she was wondering what to do, right? The one thing that she knew how to do, she, and she could do it very well, um, you know, because of prejudice and anti-Catholicism, um, she couldn't do it. <clears throat> 
So she met, um, she was wondering what, what to do when she met a bishop visiting from Maryland, uh, Father Louis Dubourg. Uh, Father Dubourg had been invited into the U.S. by Bishop Carroll of Carrollton, uh, who was the only U.S. bishop at the time. Uh, Louis de Bourg was the acting bishop of the Louisiana Territory for a number of years uh, before returning to France. But while he was visiting New York, he stopped by the only Catholic church in the city, right, St. Peter's, and there he met Elizabeth Ann Seton and invited her to found a girl's school for the growing Catholic community in Maryland, which she did. And if, you know, if we know uh, U.S. history, Maryland was so called because those, those uh, Mary, Marianists, uh, those Catholics who, who worship the Blessed Virgin Mary, go to Maryland and you, you can settle there. But don't settle in these other places where good Protestants are settling. You know, go, go to the Catholic ghetto. So uh, this country's had a long, a long and illustrious history of anti-Catholicism. Um, <clears throat> so Elizabeth began her school there in Maryland called the St. Joseph's Academy and Free School, the first free Catholic school in America. And it marked the beginning of the Catholic parochial school system in the United States. Uh, she also established there a religious community called the Sisters of Charity, which name she took from the communities founded by St. Vincent de Paul. And uh, this was the first congregation of, of women religious founded in the United States. And on March 25th, 1809, Feast of the Annunciation, uh, Elizabeth Seton pronounced her vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And from that time, she was called Mother Seton. Uh, the remainder of her life was spent in taking care of her schools and of her newfound congregation. Uh, she was described as a charming and cultured lady, uh, which no doubt greatly assisted in the spread and success of her new community. And that shows the importance of, of good manners, good manners and, and being polite and even knowing how to operate among high society. Um, that is very, it's a pleasing uh, manner of conducting oneself, being pleasing in speech, being gracious, gracious, being uh, 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 courteous, uh, and knowing how to make other people feel comfortable. That's what high society is, or what that's what high society should be. Um, and this is, high society gets corrupted because those who do know how to make other people feel comfortable, uh, those who do know how to be like, wow, they, they're just, this, that was the, the most wonderful party. I was received so well. Uh, this person was so gracious, so kind. Uh, if, if, if you know how to do that in high society, you end up getting praised. People will praise you because they were impressed by your manner. What does that do? It lends it to vanity. And so the trouble with being with culture and that, that high society is rather than, than your focus being charity for others, charity becomes an ex, uh, not an excuse, a vehicle for praise. So that's how high society can get corrupted and, and most often very much is. <clears throat> but we should all take to heart that if we know how to be polite, people will, will respond better. If we know how to be courteous and kind and charitable and gracious, it's going to go better for us when we talk to those of other faiths, those who, who, who will be attracted to the Catholic Church. Wow, why are the Catholics in my, in my place of work the most uh, uh, kind and gentle people? They're so courteous. They're so kind. They're so wonderful. That's what we want. That's what we want people to say. So that is why it is so important. Um, and not just, um, you would say, uh, that good, um, uh, good manners, but good grammar, uh, good speech, uh, properly taking care of ourselves, dress, cleanliness, etc. All those things go together. That's what that's what God made us to be. So um, no more no more of this like like you know I don't know, Catholic grunge stuff. I don't want to see any more of that. Right, high society. Right, high, good manners. Um, <laughs> The remainder of her life was spent in taking care of that schools and congregation. Um, her connections to New York high society did cause some social pressure, but it also gave her some very important connections and it left a deep impact. Um, similar, <clears throat> kind of similar to St. Catherine Drexel. Uh, Catherine Drexel would be born to a very wealthy um, New York businessman and end up giving her life to the church and that, that was um, she was some hundreds of a hundred or so years later than Elizabeth Ann Seton but it makes a huge impact when people who have everything they are in high society they are wealthy and they give it up for God that that sends a message <clears throat> so she persevered through great difficulties and setbacks 
uh, including the deaths of uh, two of her daughters and, and one of the younger nuns in her community. Uh, but she dealt with these well. She persevered. And um, uh, some kind of the indication of her spirituality, here are some quotes from hers. Uh, we must pray without ceasing in every occurrence and employment of our lives. Uh, that prayer, which is a rather a habit of lifting up the heart to God in constant communication with him. So that's practicing the presence of God throughout the day, not just those regulated times of prayer, but always having, having God in our mind. And she says also, the first end I propose in our daily work is to do the will of God. Secondly, to do it in the manner that he wills it, and thirdly, to do it because it is his will. And that's, that's the key of sanctity. That's uh, Dom Lorenzo Scapoli writing in, I think, the 14th or 15th century, um, who says that the will of God and sanctity, uh, or rather, sanctity is not fasting, uh, penances, uh, a great works of charity, um, <clears throat> a, a great uh, in, enduring of, 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 uh, of penances or whatever it may be. Sanctity is doing the will of God. Sanctity is essentially the will of God. Fastings and penance and prayers and vigils and charity, etc. Those all assist. Those assist us in being able to do the will of God. But that's the essence of it. Do the will of God. Do it in the manner that he wills it. And do it because it is his will. Right? That's where sanctity is. <clears throat> so in the end, uh, her, her order flourished. And the school she founded is still in operation today in Maryland. St. Joseph's School. Uh, but she herself, Elizabeth Ann Seaton, would die at the young age of 46 years old uh, on this day in 1821. Uh, so this is, I would say, a great example of that, that uh, 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 scripture passage of God giving the talents to the servant, to those who gave one, others who gave five and three and so on, and they returned to him, uh, made a return on the talents, uh, because she had baptism. And, you know, as much as, you know, I mean, I, look, you know, we all, we're all anti-Protestant, right? We all hate Protestants, you know, because we're, we're good Catholics and we hate Protestants, right? Um, what we hate is ecumenism. What we hate is a false ecumenism, the idea that any religion is as good as any other. That is not true. The idea that, oh, just be a good Protestant and you can get to heaven, that is false. But we do have to recognize that, uh, uh, especially for when children are baptized, even if they're baptized as Protestants, those children, they have the grace of baptism, and actually they're considered Catholic until that time when they're old enough to begin rejecting truths of the faith and accepting Protestant errors. At that point, that is when children, sadly, cease becoming Catholic, and they start becoming Protestant. So for, for the, the, at the beginning of life, right, for those, those anybody who's baptized uh, at a young age, that is, I mean, anybody who's baptized, really, if, if, the, if the formula's valid, it's a valid baptism, and graces are available until they begin rejecting truths of the faith. But, um, you know, as the church recognizes, if a Protestant is completely ignorant and has no idea that, that they're a member of a false religion, um, they're not guilty on that account. It's going to be other sins which render the, their soul, you know, guilty of, of, of venial or mortal sin. Uh, but Protestants can still, they can make acts of perfect contrition. That's a grace of God they can receive. They can, they can receive the grace of final repentance. Uh, they have to reject all errors of Protestantism if, if they want to enter into heaven. But all of that is possible. Uh, so it's just when, 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 that, when that small, um, when that uh, uh, exception becomes the rule, that's the error. And so the error these days is not so much on the part of Protestants, it's on the part of the Catholic Church wanting to just, you know, extend this, this universe of salvation, which is a grave, grave heresy. Uh, but it would seem that Elizabeth Ann Seton um, responded to the graces of her baptism. She did charitable work, she went to the poor, she, she uh, uh, you know, had this idea of doing the will of God, and that wasn't, you know, from uh, her conversion afterwards, it, it was her good works led her to conversion. That was the reward. Right, her reward for corresponding to the graces of baptism was full inclusion in the church, confirmation, holy communion, and, and rejection of Protestant errors. That was a reward, right, for, for her giving back to God. So she uh, cooperated with those graces of baptism. Uh, she had both material uh, and spiritual success when she was married and wealthy. She didn't let the wealth corrupt her. Um, the death of her husband, she didn't reject that, but it occasioned the grace of her conversion. And then perseverance. She kept persevering with these graces she had, and that's the key in the spiritual life. No matter what, persevere in grace, and, and he who perseveres to the end, he shall be saved. Um, 
So a great example for, for both Protestants and Catholics, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. That would be something I would mention, maybe perhaps to your Protestant friends or family. Why don't you look up Elizabeth Ann Seton? Right? She started out as a good Protestant, and you can point out all those good things that she did and, and, and maybe use that as, as a, a means of a, a, um, dialogue, we'd say, the good kind. Um, but uh, so let us pray for her intercession and let us pray for more conversion of Protestants that they might have that flourishing of grace in their souls that God wills uh, for all mankind. Uh, Elizabeth Ann Seton, pray for us, and may God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.